Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. My name is Ramandeep Singh and today we are going to do what are actively managed funds and what are the passively managed funds. Basic difference kya hai in me. So uh, let me tell you the basic uh, difference behind these two funds. Actively managed funds are like Kotak, Standard Multi Cap or Reliance Small Cap. So and uh, these funds are actively managed by their fund managers. Right while the passively managed funds they just track an index they just track an index that's it let's go in depth actively managed funds are the funds where the fund manager has the flexibility to choose the investment portfolio see students there are hundreds of companies there are hundreds of stocks listed in bsc listed on the bsc and the nsc and hundreds of bonds are there so uh, in the actively managed funds the fund manager is going to decide in which particular stock he is going to invest the investor's money right the fund manager is going to decide in which particular stock or in which particular bond he is going to invest the investor's money uh, so in uh, the fund manager is using his decision making power okay but within the broad parameters of the investment objective of the scheme whatever is mentioned whatever the investment objective was mentioned on the scheme documents whatever the investment objectives are already stated to the investors whatever jo bhi objective bata diya if they already told you that we are, this is a large cap fund they need to invest 80% of the assets in the large cap companies if they clearly told this is a multi cap fund 80% i mean they can invest in any any i mean with whether in large cap or small cap or mid cap i mean whatever the investment uh, objective is they need to uh, work according to the investment objective of the scheme but they can make decisions right so this is an actively managed funds uh, obviously the expense ratio is going to be high because uh, the manager uh, and his team they are working on this they are working they are analyzing the various stocks and then they are making the decisions right so actively managed funds the expense ratio is going to be higher the expense ratio is going to be higher than passively managed funds because the team uh, the whole team of fund managers is, is working uh, uh, in, is is working to to select the stocks to select the bonds right uh and what investors why investors are investing in actively managed funds because they are expecting this manager the this fund is going to perform better than the market so if somebody is investing in a multi cap fund somebody is investing in a large cap fund why he is investing in a large cap fund why not in an index fund because that person assumes by that person expects that this particular fund is going to give better return than sensex that is why the investors are investing here right so this is an actively managed fund what is passive man uh, passively managed fund uh, a good example is index fund okay a good example is uh, index fund there is i think uti uh, i think uh, nifty fund is there uti junior nifty fund is there so these funds are there what they are doing so let's say there are 50 stocks in nifty not let's say there are actually 50 stocks in nifty so what uh, the uti is doing according to the weightage of nifty the uti is trying to replicate this uh, this portfolio right the uti is trying to replicate the nifty the uti index fund the uti nifty 50 uh, fund is trying to replicate the nifty whenever a stock is removed from nifty <coughs> that particular stock is removed from the uti nifty 50 fund as well okay so these index funds or these passively managed funds they are tracking a particular index or a benchmark <coughs> and because uh not many people are involved in the uh, you know because the fund manager is not putting in so many efforts because he is just tracking is just tracking the nifty so the expense ratio is normally very low normally it is less than 0.5 percent 
while in case of actively managed fund it is 1% to 1.5% and in some cases it is more than 2% that too in direct funds right so uh, a passive fund it actually tracks a uh, an index or a benchmark right so expense ratio is uh, normally really low uh, than the actively managed funds and what the investor is expecting that his return should be equal to market returns the returns should be equal to market returns even if the return is more or less than the market returns then there is high tracking error okay if the index is moving like this then the index fund should move like that as well if index fund is moving like that then this thing is tracking error the deviation from the index fund from the index is tracking error the more the tracking error is uh, the less you know recommended that fund is right it should go along with the index now what is an etf and what is the difference between an etf and index fund <coughs> see students uh, in case of an index fund you are dealing with the amc you are buying from you are buying your units from amc let's say reliance mutual fund or uti you are buying your funds you are buying the fund from amc and you are selling it back to the asset management company only but in case of exchange traded funds or the etfs what they are doing is they are making a unit let's say they made a pharma let's name them anything right they made an etf uh, let's say one unit is consist of some portion is let's say Reliance Industries is there, Hero Motocop is there, Ashok Leland, whatever the funds, right? There is just one unit of uh, this particular ETF, right? And then this particular ETF is listed on a stock exchange. If you want to buy this ETF, you need to go now. After the NF is done, if you want to buy or sell, you need to go to the stock exchange because ETFs are listed on the stock exchanges. So ETFs are also passive funds whose portfolio replicates an index such as an equity market or commodity market similar to index funds but the basic difference between an ETF and an index fund is in case of an index fund you need to go to the AMC in case of an ETF you need to go to the stock exchanges right. The units are issued to investors via new fund offer via AMC after which they are available for sale and purchase on a stock exchange that is the basic difference between an etf and an index fund an etf is traded on a stock exchange an index fund you need to buy or sell through an asset management company that is the basic difference between index fund and exchange traded fund otherwise the exchange traded fund is also replicating an index i mean it may replicate sensex it may replicate s p 500 right the basic difference is index fund you need to go to amc to buy or sell in case of an etf exchange traded fund you need to go to the stock exchange to buy or sell right so that is a basic difference between the index fund and the exchange traded fund the expense ratio of etfs are really low most of the time and another difference between an index fund and exchange traded fund because etfs are traded on a stock exchanges you can get their real-time prices while the nav of index fund is calculated once in a day I think it is at three o'clock or whatever time it is. So in case of index fund, the NAV is calculated once in a day, uh, while the pricing or the the price of an ETF is calculated on a real time basis because it is uh, registered. It is listed actually. Listed is the right word. It is listed on a stock exchange. So that is a basic difference between an index fund and an ETF. Ye basic basic difference ho gaya. So students, students that's all for today please install the bank exams today mobile application in case you are looking for uh, the courses for RBI grade B NABAD RBI grade B NABAD or the professional exams professional exams like NISM NISM 5A and we are going to release for IC38 as well. So that's all for today students. Thank you and have a very nice day. Please install this mobile application. Thank you. Please subscribe the channel as well. Really important for us. Thank you.